Hi, everyone. Today is Thursday, September 2nd, 2021. I think what we were talking about for September movement is coming true. I'm very excited. But you know what? There's always these big pullbacks. So be very careful. You know, sure. remember dollar cost average and do not panic. Um, why don't we take a quick look at the market Muant, before we get into those wonderful topics that uh, we're going to examine today before yeah. getting into the questions. Thank you for that confirmation because I was just debating what to show. So, um, and I thought we'd maybe just start off with a trading view here. And you guys, uh, last week my mic was kind of jacked up for the first half of the show. So just chime in over on the right hand side if you can hear me okay I'll, I'll try and make an adjustment uh, just wanted to take a look here I'm just going to kind of sort some uh, biggest gainers uh, since 8 p.m. Uh, last night um, EDT uh, that's when this this rolls over for lots and lots of things but uh, I mentioned this uh, Cedify uh, fund this is a launch pad this has been doing great um, so I hope people have gotten a, a chance to look at this uh, keeper I mentioned uh, a long time ago um, if you're a tech person you're probably interested in uh, something like keeper um, notice that SLP took a nice uh, pop-up obviously uh, Solana is doing great our vet here has been doing uh, spectacular well um, let's go ahead and take a look at yield guild games and uh, why don't I just resort these? I know a lot of people were happy that their ADA uh, went over, you know, three bucks. Um, so that was pretty uh, slick. And then uh, this RLC, we talked about this uh, yesterday. Got an amazing pump uh, just a little while ago, a couple hours ago, and then took it a took a pretty sizable crash down. But this has been um, really tracking up pretty well. And then. Uh, I thought it was interesting that BTC uh, got into the 50 grand range and then just real quick let me resort these because I want to show the total and I'm sorry if I'm going fast through these guys I just uh, wanted to take a look here real quick before we get started and then obviously ETH had a, had a wonderful rise against BTC uh, into the 3840 uh, $50 range um, yesterday and it's now sitting at uh, 3765 so that's great um, let's take a look at total Sam I'd like to get your uh, opinions about total uh, market cap here so this is the total market cap we're sitting at um, uh, 2.2 trillion any thoughts on this well I mean I feel like we could be making a run for 3 trillion in September there were two numbers I had and that was three trillion and eight trillion. Okay. And what I sort of was predicting, um, but I, I wasn't really sure. I was like, you know, maybe we'll hit three trillion in September sometime, and then by the end of the year we'll hit eight trillion, which right. sounds like a tremendous jump. But when you see the number of institutions that are coming in, and that makes me really happy because remember. I was worried about the pensions and mm -hmm. even though there are going to be quite a few pensions that are not able to keep up with the inflation, actually most things are not going to be able to keep up with the inflation coming right. except for cryptos. This is being reflected in the inflation that is going on out there in society, just like in houses and everything else. And this is going to continue on. I feel this is my prediction. Mm -hmm. um, I feel very strongly about that. The numbers on the market, I'm not always 100% sure on. And that's why I don't do any trading. I don't sell my channel as a trading channel. Right. Um, I don't actually like traders. I don't like how they try to pump me for information all the time. Right. I Listen, and I'm not talking about people who just join my channel sure. and jo join the higher tier and then throw a bunch of questions at me. I know they're just excited and they're also trying to get their portfolio straight and they're in a race against time and they're watching old videos and I want to be there to help them out as much as I possibly can because by the time I leave the crypto space I want to make sure that I have a whole bunch of people who are happy that they stayed in the crypto space that they supported blockchain for all the wonderful thing it's going to do in the world everyone keeps talking about who didn't buy in oh they're so mad i'm just like <laughs> stop being mad just buy in just pick some good ones like polka dot that's sure. still a good blue chip i mean yep. it's more than three times what it was did it have a bit of a pullback i there's no way i would have been dumping money in at 2.3 
that's why I am waiting for, um, we'll talk about Star Atlas in a minute, but. Sure. You yeah, know, that's um, up, I mean, yeah. 25% since we yeah. last talked on the crypto yeah. review. So that's great. Any other stick out to you? Um, or would you like to talk about total two at all, meaning uh, market cap minus Bitcoin? Well, I think people are starting to panic a bit on Bitcoin. Do you get that feeling? Because the alts are doing so great Ethereum. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you like my posting in Discord about two days ago about Ethereum? I, I might have missed it. Which, which? Oh, what? I said, um, just wait until Ethereum oh, yeah, runs yeah, yeah. to $12,000, <laughs> <laughs> ha, 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 right? Yeah. Like I, I knew it was getting ready to run again to go past the 4,000. And then I felt like the next stop is 12. And then after that, it's 40. And I'm like, oh my God, I never yeah. thought. I mean, I mentioned 40 maybe a year ago for the right. first time. Right. But I'll tell you honestly, I don't know if I'll be as all in at 40 as I'll be at 12, just because... I'm not crazy. You're not crazy. Uh, no. Yeah. I, I, when I did read your no. post, I, I kind of got up and shook my rump a little bit and did a happy dance. That's for sure. Um, yeah. It's yeah. good to hear. I think a lot of us have felt for a long time that it would be going up there. So it was great. Uh, the Bankless interview with Raul Paul I thought was incredible this week. Um, it's probably the, one of the best things I've listened to this week. Um, had a, lots of interesting things to say. Um, about market trends and Ethereum specifically. And um, it was really, really great. It was good. Did you happen to catch that interview at all? No, actually, I did not. And it's in my list to listen to. I do try to stay up on a lot of the technical stuff. I listen mm -hmm. quite a bit, actually, um, when I'm just cleaning up and doing things. I mm -hmm. listen to um, a lot of those type of videos. Um, like I listened to Monaco 64 as well, yep. because like him too. he has over 30 years experience in the industry, different from me. Um, so I like listening to him and he um, has a lot of information about the history of a lot right. of these things. Um, and we're going to see a lot of history making things happen in the market, um, in cryptos and a lot of things. So, I mean, just get excited. It's it's yeah. good news. And isn't know, it nice right? to hear some good news? It is. You know, it is. It is. Uh, you know, a lot of us have just had a wonderful end of last year into this year. Um, and then rotating into kind of metaverse things uh, throughout the summer. Had a wonderful summer. I feel like DeFi is starting to heat up here. You can see that by the total value lock. So I think we're going to have a wonderful DeFi um, fall. Maybe I should use the word autumn. Uh, here in the northern hemisphere, I don't want people to think that uh, we believe it'll go down. I th actually think it's gonna it's gonna do really really well here. Um, seeing a lot of legacy interest in uh, DeFi and partnerships, which is great. Um, let me just show a few things, and if you have any comments, um, awesome. But I I just I want to see if this spurs anything. Um, Snook, uh, this is a game I've been looking at. Uh, it's it's pretty interesting, and some things are going to be happening over the next few days. So uh, I don't know if people are interested in taking a look at this, but their their Discord is great. Uh, if we take a look at the net reduction, I've never seen the net reduction be this high as far as the burned uh, Ethereum, which is pretty incredible. If we take a look at the uh, ultrasound dot money here, we burned 170 thousand ETH so far that kind of boggles my mind uh, I mentioned these L2s I try and show these every week every week we're just seeing more and more um, total value locked inside the L2 solutions if uh, anybody's out there is a little frustrated maybe with your Ethereum uh, transaction fees man there's all sorts of options here and uh, you just got to get smart about how to use some of these L2s um, like Arbitrum was released basically to the public yesterday and uh, um, let me point pe people also to uh, this guy. Um, this guy's got a wonderful video uh, that was released yesterday about how to use Arbitrum if, if you want to kind of use it. So we'll include that in the in the notes there. And uh, what else did I want to show? Um, DeFi Llama is a great resource. Uh, once again, we're seeing the total value locked inside of uh, DeFi platforms. Just uh, it just continues to increase here so I said a whole bunch of things Sam uh, any thoughts about any of those things that I just mentioned well first of all I think it's great that you include those links in the description box below we always make sure when Lian Zhang is putting the free sampler out on YouTube for the public as well as 
our members there and we have it here on Patreon as well as Crowdcast where you can click on the links below so that people can do their own research, keep track of what's going on. Um, you know, I don't want people to get frustrated that we're talking about all these other projects and you're still waiting to take your first profits. Remember, there's people who've been here for a couple of years mm -hmm. and they were in the same position I was in back when Doge went on a run. Remember, I talked about releasing it into the ethos and it, somebody said to me, you know, that's one of Elon Musk's great complaints. And a lot of people's complaints is that it's locked up within too few um, um, wallets. Mm -hmm. You know, what is it? Just over 500 wallets in the world hold the majority of uh, Doge. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I feel like one of those wallets, somebody has lost their keys or their password or died or something. So some of that Doge is not even ever going to circulate again. Absolutely. That just uh, came from nowhere. I wonder if that's going to make it to the news because I, I prefer to blab about stuff that can be proven. So maybe that'll come out in the news. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always say the date at the beginning and try to wear like a scarf. And if you look back at my tapings, right. it's like my hair looks different. Right. You know, my makeup looks different. I never sure. get right. the same on any of the videos. So that's what we're really careful about when we're going to be putting together um, some stuff, but, uh, and, and it is September 2nd, uh, 2021, yeah. if anybody needs to know, yep. It's yeah. kind of a nice marker for us because Sam and I can kind of go back and, um, you know, review some things and kind of see where we're at. And, um, yeah, yeah, yeah but people Lots are always pride. selling, taking profits. Sure. Um, I do endorse that wholly. And that's when I say, you know, cause I'm not crazy. Right. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Someone was talking about stellar. If that could go to $50 and, I concurred that, oh, yeah, long term. I mean, for me, I'll be out at $15. But I mean, you know, when you buy it in the pennies, you know, I'm not crazy. That's what I'm talking about. Like, right. take your profits, release it into the universe, you know, keep 5% of it. Because you know what? If you've gone out and bought an apartment building with it or a condo or some farmland or helped a family member's business, um, you know, or bought something really nice for somebody that they always wanted, like a trip somewhere or, you know, um, help them make people's dreams come true. And yeah. I know a lot of people have projects that they want to put together that will help needy people in different areas and also um, animals that don't have any homes. So whenever I see the market go up, I know people are, you know, taking their profits and they're starting to put it out there into the universe as well on this end where we all live and uh, a lot of people need help and a lot of people pretty soon are going to have more money than what they need for themselves. And it's so awesome to hear about what you guys have plans to do. And also what I see when I do readings for some of my peeps for the future, I, yeah. I'm happy to work for all of you for at least the next 18 months in cryptos. Can you tell I'm doing the countdown? I don't anyone, I don't want anyone to take it personal. It's just that I feel at that point, the market will be at $8 trillion. So, you know, the sooner that comes, the sooner we're all on that Doge cruise, right? Absolutely. And, you know, you've kind of always used that as some markers for yourself. Uh, you were you were kind of given or received uh, very specific instructions about how long you would be doing this and even what comes after this. Right. So um, I think for you, it's a nice, nice marker. Um, yeah. So I totally get it. And um, I hope everybody else does, too. Uh, what else do I want to talk about real quick uh, before we get going? I think maybe we just jump into the questions and I'll come back to some of the nerd stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we got plenty of that. We got to talk about Star Atlas. But you know what? We probably For have sure. a few questions I bet on do. here. Anyways, hey, listen, the first one is from... Hootie Mac with 15 upvotes. Well, what a debut for Hootie Mac because I think that's a new person. Me too. Thank you both for all you do. I have 5K to invest in five cryptos. I'm thinking on investing 1,000 in ADA, VET, DOT, and two flyers. What would you recommend if you had 5K? Do you see a dip coming or should I get them in now? So there's a third part to this, but let's just hold for a sec. So uh, thinking about ADA vet dot and two flyers, um, what do you recommend for the other two um, or potentially uh, different ones for 5K? And do you see a dip coming before uh, they should jump in? Yes. Yeah, you, you should never FOMO into the market. 
and you know i'm fully ready if i don't get the price i want for a certain coin that a certain token that i'm stocking today just having trouble getting usdt <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Sam's Sam's patiently waiting uh, for a pullback on uh, the Star Atlas, Polis, and Atlas. Um, just uh, I, maybe that's what she was referencing. I don't know, but Sam's very very patient, and uh, she likes to get good entries. And I'm always a big fan of uh, laddering in, just like I'm a big fan of laddering out. You know, this all or nothing thing. Yeah, it's never yeah. worked well for me. So you know, when the market was 1.3 trillion, when it took that little dip. Mm -hmm. From 1.5 to 1.3, I was mm -hmm. like, you know what? A couple of people, I was doing a reading at that time, and I said, you know, normally I say just put half in, and but you know what? I said just put it all in right now because I sure. had seen it go from 2.6 or 2.5 mm -hmm. down to the 1.3, and I had blabbed earlier that I felt that it might hit 1.3, like but for a minute. It wasn't, a, it hit it twice, but it wasn't there for very long or just below 1.3, but again, it wasn't there very long. Like if you had gone away on a vacation and then press the refresh button when you came home, you would have missed it. Absolutely. 100%. And thank you for bringing that up because there are exceptions, right? Uh, my father was lucky enough to come in, you know, right at that uh, May 18th uh, low. Um, he was also able to dump a bunch more in at that July uh, 20th low. So as far as uh, market cap. So I, I was really happy about that. Um, that he had several opportunities being a brand new person um, and being able to come in at great prices, right? So I guess it does vary, doesn't it? Sometimes you can just tell, hey, this is this is the bottom, right? Uh, the, li the th Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say in regards to that list, mm -hmm. um, you could always watch those individual coins as well because some of them will have run really hot, like mm -hmm. Yield Guild Games. Oh my gosh, that ran so hot, like to Absolutely. $10. And of course it's gonna, cause if somebody, I was like, don't get it now, it's $10. <laughs> Wait for a pullback, like $9, anything around nine or under nine, that's a good price. And I think it's at eight something now, something like that. We'll look at that for mm -hmm. sure. But you know, the thing is, is that when something runs really hot like that, you know, just wait, be patient. It, there's always a pullback. And if there isn't, if it's the one exception that there's no pullback, then just move on. There'll be something else that behaves in the normal crypto way. You know, some of them pull back, like they'll run ahead and then they'll pull back like 80% sometimes to the very low. But even if you get it on the halfway point back, you've still done very well because we've seen the timelines are getting shorter and shorter Absolutely. with these little, like the slingshot to back to over 2.5. It's not going to be straight up. Um, but I'm really feeling strongly about 3 trillion. So I got my fingers crossed and I'm just holding on. It's more about the individual price um, where you're going to ladder out. Um, like for example, ADA, a lot of people um, bought into ADA and bought a full bag of 100,000 ADA. Mm -hmm. And so at $10 that for a lot of them, that's their first step out. Cause they know it's going to a hundred, but they're like, I'm not going to be dumb about it and just hold on to. But I mean, if you only have a small amount, some people are like, no, I'm just going to hold on to my first step out is like 80 bucks or whatever, because I only have, you know, 8,000 of them. And I want this to be life changing for them. And if Sam says it's going to be a hundred and if Charles says it's going to be a hundred and if we see it run from like four cents to 10 bucks within a couple of years, you know, hundred's not a big stretch, is it? No, it's not. Um, there's so much liquidity in the world. Uh, so if you, let's go back to this question. Uh, why don't you give them three blue chips and two flyers? Cause that looks like that's what they're looking for. So thoughts about three blue chips and two flyers. Yeah. Well, you know, I do agree with them um, in regards to Cardano, Vet and Dot. Um, those three always seem to be, you know, if one's not running and doing really well, the other one is. So, you know, and you don't want to make them buy like 15 or 20. Right. A lot of people lose money as well, just from losing out on, you know, converting tokens and then the True. developers they make a point of that being part of the inflation on it because they count on people missing that information that oh you have to download it onto this wallet and convert it or mm -hmm. you know by this date or it's unusable so i can see why you know you want to keep the list reasonable um the other two i'm going to leave it um to them 
to pay attention to what we're talking about for the rest of the time because obviously they have access to the entire show so absolutely just uh, see what we talk about, see what comes out in the blab, because this yeah. is real time. This is why people want to see it live, because I have no idea what I'm going to say. Yeah. And, you know, do your own research as well. Um, Hootie Mac, you know, you might get a feeling, a great feeling about something that's mentioned today. Uh, the third part of this question is, uh, last one, uh, what are your thoughts on Divi? Do you see it lasting long term? Um, well, this is one that um, Muant and I both agreed that it w wasn't one of any project that we were interested in. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot, Sam. Appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, Kwaku says, hey, guys. Uh, heard on the last live stream you speaking that live peer might overtake Theta. Um, having into account what you saw about Theta's Black Swan for those who sold or converted most of the Theta position at $10, do you think it is wise to swap the remaining for live peer? and other newer stuff like Matic and Atlas. Thank you guys, Rock. Um, I mean, it all depends on how, how far you have ridden your Theta. I mean, if you're like me, you're looking to get out now because, you know, Some you got it at it like... Six cents, 10 cents, yeah. 15 cents, 20 oh, yeah. cents. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's my thing. I'm like get out you know <laughs> put it into something else just and it's only because you know now i would say something different if you bought theta at like four dollars or something i'd be like oh well you probably want to hold that yep. for a little bit longer because you have to think about the tax implications as well absolutely um, you know and i'm not one for jumping in and out of projects unless you made the mistake of not researching you bought you fomoed in before you researched and then you found out some really bad news and then you decided to take the haircut. You were like, oh, I had no idea. Yep. That was such a crap point. <laughs> and, and just to be clear, Kwaku, I mean, uh, I think, it, of course, you know, there were some people mentioning uh, that uh, they liked Live Peer more than Theta. Um, I think from my perspective, all I was saying is uh, you can easily see the, the, mm -hmm. the institutions and the notables behind Live Peer and why it's been doing well. Uh, I still think Theta is going to do great. Uh, yeah. Don't don't ever forget that you know Google is running validator nodes for Theta, or uh, you know Samsung is joined right to the hip with uh, with Theta. So you know, um, once again, I just hope you know nobody out there ever gets a feeling of all or nothing. You know, unless they just have too many tokens to 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 manage. You know, so that's what I would say. Um, this, uh, it looks like there was a question that was upvoted. So on, on my list, I've got a new one at the top now from Mary M. Okay. Um, it says, hey, Sam and Moo, I recall earlier this year you had a blab that XRP triggering a crypto market up move would happen around a holiday weekend. Is this blab still in play? If so, is it a U.S. holiday? holiday? We have one coming up. Uh, or more obscure holiday from little known country. Thank you and hugs to you both. Well, thank you, Mary M, for the reminder. And Mary M has some is somebody who has been a peep of mine for quite a while, yeah. and uh, has circled back with results from readings I've done for her in the past with uh, the information. So, thank you, Mary, for being part of the group that uh, has helped me develop my ability. So, I'm happy to tell you that this is still in play. This is just like I said. You know, with you, when you look at the blabs, you have to say, well, what did what she say still fit? Like, can it still happen? Like, can Nigel Farage, you know, get into power in Britain after Boris Johnson? Can that still happen? Yes. Right. Can Donald Trump serve, serve a second term? Yes. Right. It can. It's still all in play. Can XRP trigger the bull market um, with the SEC outcoming? and settling with the XRP, XRP shoots to $10. It's a holiday weekend. And that's because I said that I saw all of these men, because again, XRP army is about 80% men. And I thought it was the brokers, but it might be the XRP army people. 
So next huge holiday we have coming up in the United States is Labor Day. That's that's Monday, September 6th. So just a yeah. few days away from now. Um, very, very Let's interesting. Let's see what happens. Yeah. I mean, I don't buy or sell my XRP based on any of my blabs. I knew what I saw, that it was going to work out in the future. Right. Um, I had my amount, and it's been sitting in my BitFi wallet since then. And I don't touch it. I just leave it there. And then when it gets to $10, then I'm going to look at selling it. Right. But that's, yeah. you know, so I'm always excited when someone reminds me of a blab that I've had in the past. And I'm like, you know, one thing that I've been learning is that I may um, be off on my timing, but the description will still fit. So thanks for the reminder. And it's coming up soon. So yep. let's keep our eyes and ears open for an, a move in XRP and see if that was the holiday. Thanks, Sam. Uh, Chris got one here. It says, "Hey, Sam and Moo, I'm wondering if ADA might pull back, pull back before another rally. Do you see ADA pulling back? Question mark. If yes, what might the pullback be? Question mark. Wondering whether to buy now or whether to risk waiting for a lower price. Thank you. Well, you know, here's the thing. I do think there's going to be a pullback, and if we look at the market now, it's at 2.3 trillion. And um, let's see. Akari Daniels just had an, an amazing run, um, yeah. especially through July and August. Um, so like we were talking at the beginning of the show, it popped up here to about $3.10. It's currently at uh, $2.94. Any thoughts, Sam? Yeah, I do see it pulling back. Okay. Um, but I don't see I don't personally see it going below two dollars myself. So okay. here's the thing. Maybe you want to buy some now and then put in a bid at two dollars and fifty cents. And it just depends on how much are you willing to wait for. But here's the thing. Cardano is one of the cryptos that I feel will be going to ten dollars very quickly. So you have to ask yourself, do you want to risk the possibility of missing it for the sake of a 45 cent differential in the price. Right? right. And maybe if you just put, if you're putting a large amount in, you know, maybe put half in now, and then at least you can feel that you've, you know, you've got your placeholder there. And then, you know what, if it runs to 10 bucks, then just take the other half of that money and move it to somewhere else. I mean, that's all I, that's all I do. If I'm, sure looking at putting any new money into the market sure thanks sam uh crypto dusty dog says uh hey sam and moo i'm thinking of swapping out of bitcoin cash into solana and bitcoin cash had a wonderful run over the last couple of days but anyway uh yeah. into solana i have uh, missed the have i missed the boat with solana uh or the multiples are the multiples going to still be better with bitcoin cash over the next 12 months um, well, I think Solana will have a better multiple than um, Bitcoin Cash because Bitcoin Cash is more on par with Ethereum as far as, you know, where you put your gunpowder. So, you know, when the market goes down, it doesn't take as usually as big a percentage of a hit, mm -hmm. you know, and when it goes, when the market goes up, it goes up as well. And then sometimes it goes on these big runs when the market goes on the big runs, which is same with Ethereum. And that sure. was my ideology, why you wouldn't leave your gunpowder in, you know, USDT or USG, USDC or uh, the Gemini stable token either. That would sure. be another one that I would choose if I was looking just to sit in cash just for maybe, you know, maybe the market was running really hot. I decided to sell more Dogecoin like before, and then I was just sitting in cash. And I was looking at buying a condo and then I was like, well, that could be too long from now. My fiat money could be worth crap by then. So I don't know when that big inflation's. I mean, it's big inflation now on a lot of goods, mm -hmm. but I feel like we haven't seen anything yet. So um, Solana will probably, you know, reflect that inflation more so because like exponentially because it is a newer uh, token on the listing um mm -hmm. bitcoin cash like i said and ethereum they're just i you know th they're just different things you know the same as i have my gold i have my silver i've also got have my coins divided up differently as well you know ethereum is a holding place 
Uh, Bitcoin Cash is a holding place. Cardano was the place where it was like, okay, I can put some money in that. That's a little bit higher risk, but I really do feel like this is going to $10 pretty quick. So, you know, I don't want it to sit all in Ethereum. I'll, I'll put it in Cardano. And I, you know, so I'm careful as well. I mean, I know what I know, but I still have to be um, responsible, you know, with my money. So if you want to take your Bitcoin cash and put it into Solana, I mean, isn't that what it's for? You know, your gunpowder, right? I don't feel like you've missed it with Solana, but, you know, again, um, you know, I, I didn't go into Solana because, you know, I have Polkadot and I feel like, you know, we have a lot of stuff that, you know, the multiple is going to be better than Solana. Like even VAT, for example, will have a better multiple than Solana. But again, you know, it all depends on what you're looking for. <clears throat> yeah, and I'm just taking a look at the chart, and um, Solana just uh, just went back to its old, uh, I think it's all-time high. Let me just uh, refresh that. Nope, just under. All-time high was uh, 124, and it just popped into the 120 range, if anybody yeah. cares. Um, Crypto Cato said some pundits, possibly no talents, have mentioned that we could have a pullback in the crypto market in September. This seems to be a typical pattern for the month over the years. Uh, do you see this happening or do you still see up, up, up in September? Oh, well, I mean, I still see the pullbacks because, again, you know, just to review, remember? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> that's what it's going to look like. So, you know, you could have like three of those in September even. And that, and I can't call the top and the bottom of that. Like, for example, you know, we'll go to 2.3. Well, maybe we'll pull back to 1.9 and then scream ahead to 2.5, you know, or only go down to um, 2.1 and scream ahead to the 3 trillion, right, early on right. in September and then have like this brutal pullback to like 2.6. You know, so I don't know the timing on this stuff. I just see that I see the bigger wave behind it. I just don't know how deep the dip is with the wave that I'm looking at that I can see. Right. The ones behind right. it. I just see the bigger one behind it. I mean, imagine I'm standing at the shore and I'm looking and it's like, oh, yeah, the next one is bigger. Oh, yeah. And that next one, it's even bigger again. And then right. they're like, well, how long is it? Right. I'm like, I don't know. They're pretty close together. Like, I wouldn't want to be out there with a the surfboard right now. <laughs> yeah. um, Crypto Cato, I guess what I would say is um, I think September is going to be great. I think we're in the second leg of the bull. That's obvious. Um, I would rather be in the market than out right now. Um, and I think October is even better. I felt like October is just going to be phenomenal. So that's how I feel. Uh, it, it's their markets, though. They do go up and down. So Barton Tom says, uh, hey, Sam, uh, what are the two best Q labs to buy today? Thank you for all the help you give us. It is due to your help, a lot of help. I expect to be able to buy a house in 2022. Awesome, Barton. Thank you. Well, Barton, let me just say that I am really glad that you found us. And I'm really glad that you didn't. I'm Barton had mentioned that. When he initially got into cryptos, he lost $2,000 right away. And oh, he was wow. so upset about that. Yeah, he yeah. was going to leave the space, but he found me and he invested more and is now going to be able to, I think it's for cash too, but I don't want to share too much of Barton Tom's yeah, yeah. business, right? Yeah. And um, I'm really happy about that. And we've had Barton Tom on as a guest over at Rudy's Psychic Meetup, which is mm -hmm. starting again on September the 8th. So that's next Wednesday. So I'm excited to um, get together. And for anyone who doesn't have access, who has access to this, but not the Rudy Psychic Meetup, um, you can see an edited version um, here and there over on YouTube under Sam Jam Productions. So thank you, Bart and Tom. Yeah. Uh, Ani's got a question here about XYO. Uh, oh. XY Sorry, sure. Muant. Um, Bart and Tom, he was asking what the two best Q labs are to yep. buy today. And yes. I didn't answer his question. No, you didn't. I was just <laughs> I was just telling him thank you for the compliment. So I'm okay. just gonna look I'm just gonna look at it now and hey, you know what? I'm gonna share my screen because cool. then I can see if anything I'll close this here and see if anything comes out in the lab. All right, let me 
make sure I share the right screen. Don't want to get into any trouble. <laughs> All right. I don't know what kind of trouble I could get into. I you can get into a lot of trouble. Right now. I know you. I see you. <sighs> okay. So Ethereum. Oh, that had such a hard run. Cardano. Two best Q Labs. Hmm. So polka dot did rest a bit. Uh, I would say though probably chain link because you know how they run together. So chain link is a little bit more of a deal. You know what? But I would say the two Q labs that are the best right now this minute are probably like Stellar and uh, V Chain. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say out of the Q labs. What do you think? Oh gosh. <clears throat> well, I like the link comment. I was able to on the Psychic Nerds Discord yesterday, kind of nailed the bottom at, of the link. Uh, I think it was at nine twenty-seven, nine thirty-one a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and I got a very distinct feeling that it uh, would be heading much higher. And I think last I looked, it's thirty bucks or something. So, um, but I I do like link and. Um, so why don't I say link and vet? Why don't I say that? Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't think we can go wrong with any of those. So yeah. thanks again for that great question from Barton uh, Tom. Annie says XYO had a nice move. Do you see it going back down or settling at a higher accumulation level? So that's the first one. And then there's several more questions within this question. So XYO had a nice move. Do you see it going back down or settling at a higher accumulation level? Um, well, XYO, the same as with Soul, which is she has that in, in another question. They're sort of in the same group that are in with Reef and Ren and a lot of super, like a lot of the ones that people want to accumulate at a cheap price and mm -hmm. then that you have some time to do it probably like the next year sure. but that doesn't mean that xyo is not going to run to like five cents it's just okay. that you know when it's a couple of bucks you're looking back and you're glad that you kept dollar cost averaging into it um and so that's where all of those tokens stand so is there going to be a pullback oh yeah probably i mean it ran pretty hot it usually look how it ran hot last time. Absolutely. And then it pulled back. Well, remember earlier when I said some coins pulled back 80%, that's what it looks like that was. Cause when you see mm -hmm. that little downturn and where that is, and then how high it ran and then where it corrected back to, I wonder if that's like an 80% drop what? in value from it's high. And then it, and then it went straight back up again, rested a little bit and then went mm -hmm. just above the previous all-time high and has now pulled back again to one and a half cents so you know and my my dollar cost average in on that was half a cent i felt okay. like that was a good price for it i still feel that's a good price for it but um i wouldn't go all in on it again the market's running pretty hot right now and you can probably get it for i would say one for 0 0.0125 um so if you don't have any, you should get some. It's already down 8.6%. And mm -hmm. just, you know, like you do, Muant, just stair step into it and yeah. don't miss out. Because XYO is one that you should be, I, I'm going to predict that will be dollar cost averaging into for a while. I mean, I got all of mine at half a cent and that's like the way I roll. I just buy it, hold it and just hold it for more than a year. And then I just have my, sell price and um, exercise caution. And I don't eye it suspiciously if it sits there for a little while while the other stuff is moving. Cause I'm like, well, look at how much I paid for it. Right. That was a lot cheaper than ADA. <laughs> and that's what I wanted to say is, you know, it doesn't it really depend on where you came in because I mean, it's only down 8.9% from its all time high. Um, so I don't know where you came in, but I mean, you know, in the last 30 days, it's still up 172 percent. Um, the last year, it's up, you know, almost 2,000 percent. So, you know, I just kind of be curious where you came in at um, because 
there comes a point the longer you've been in crypto and the earlier you are and you're holding something you like you know will do well that really market movements don't really matter you're so far above where you purchased it at um, and I feel bad for people that maybe bought a crap token and that's that's never happened to them or they wrote it all the way down but um, that's what I would say I'm just kind of curious where you came in because I, I I would assume you're probably in pretty good shape um, is kind of just what I wanted to say. I don't know why I wanted to say that. Uh, the other parts about her question, uh, can you blab on KNC and Sol, but not Solana, the S-O-U-L, Phantasma, uh, in terms of when they might move out of their current ranges? Okay. I didn't realize KNC, because I KNC, that's one that I've just kind of put away um i have it in the same wallet i have my i had my doge i still have doge in that wallet too my bitfi and i moved my uh i have my kyber network in there as well and i'm just holding it because um i saw it as one in the future that would do really well i don't have an exact timeline on it um, but i have it secured for the long term, just like I had my Doge secured for the long term. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that if you are holding it, just continue to hold it. Um, if you're looking to put new money in, um, the better prices are things like XYO and Soul and Super Farm and Reef, those ones. Mm -hmm. Um, the other one here is, uh, and what about eCash, XEC, a rebranding of BCH? Um, might this be a part of what gets BCH in, into higher valuations, as you've said for a while now? Thanks. I kind of just want to point some things here and hopefully just clear up any, any confusion. Um, mm -hmm. During 2020, there was a split, right? There was a split. Um, inside of bch and uh i am having a hard time remembering but i think one was like um bitcoin cash node and uh yeah it was november 15th of 2020. you can go take a look at the site um uh bitcoin cash abc and bitcoin cash node so the the one you're talking about uh i don't know what you, what you mean uh when you say xec because um, I, I don't know if I've ever known it by that name. So let's go ahead and why don't we go up to this uh, Bitcoin Cash ABC BCHA. Um, is this the one you mean? Uh, it's currently up 8.4% 4, 8 uh, today. It's uh, $194. Its website is eCash. Uh, maybe they rebranded the eCash over to this, this, this other name. That could be it, I guess. But uh, anyway, uh, Sam, any thoughts on this? Um, you know, the trading volume on it is like suspiciously high for something that just has like a question mark there. And I'm wondering um, if this is just marketing. Okay. That's what I'm wondering. That's the feeling that I'm getting for it. But I mean, if you look at um, the GitHub. Mm hmm. I don't know. I don't think I I don't get a good feeling about it, Miwant. I don't know what the deal is with this coin, but it sounds to me like they're making some claims that are probably not right. The volume could just be high, uh, Ani, because people have it sitting in wallets and then they just split it off and maybe they're selling it or trading it for other things. Um Maybe other people that never had any BCH thought that this was an opportunity to get very cheap. We so, showed how, how low it was there at, f at different periods of time. I, I don't really have anything to say about this. I don't really, and I, of course we care about your question, but I don't really care about this uh, this thing we're talking about. For some reason, I, I'm just like, eh, I don't know. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it seems to me that it was the early ones who got in who made money, and that gets people's attention, you know, when people who got in first thing who created it mm -hmm. um you know and i say that loosely 
I can tell you, Ani, I, I didn't. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for saying it that way. Man, <laughs> that's pretty accurate. That's yeah. good choice of words there. Um, yeah. I can tell you, Ani, I've never went through any steps to claim this or anything else. So, um, Marlon gone surfing. Hey, Sam and Moo, Raul Paul on Banquist was mentioning ETH and other coins are running up now due to the pending release of ETH 2.0. He said once ETH 2.0 is released, uh, he said potentially in December or in the spring, actually, of 2022, uh, it will dump as everyone will take ETH profits. Uh, and he explained that it would be incredibly high. Uh, I think he threw around... 20 grand, 40 grand, something like that. Anyway, buying properties, etc. Meaning people would just spend it. They've, they're up so much they would just start to spend out. Uh, I wanted to get your mark, our thoughts on this for the other parts of the market around this time, like ADA and other coins. Will we continue to see a rise in these areas after ETH 2.0 release date? Peace out, beautiful people. Any thoughts? Jeez, you know, I hadn't thought about that. Because I was actually my just between you and me, I do think it's going to go to like 40,000. That's like my long term on Ethereum. Yeah. But my sell price is $12,000. And then he's kind of got a second part to this question in the comments. It just says, hey, maybe an XRP settlement will also help push the market during this time. Any thoughts? I think that it will, I think that there will be a pullback. Like I do agree. I don't know if I'll say December because mm -hmm. my, rather than timing, I'm really looking at price mm -hmm. and yeah, I'm not stupid. I'll be out at 12 by 12. I'll probably stair step out. I'll probably start to sell some at 10 even. Sure. And just, just because again, you know, the price I came in at, I mean, you know, it's just, but there's other stuff that, you know, that I just bought a few months ago from my Doge profits mm -hmm. um, right. back in May. So I have to hold that until, and, you know, some of that is Ethereum and I don't mind that. Sure. So even if there's a big pullback, and this is why you take cream off or take profits or have your step out, because if you've only got maybe about 20%, like let's say you have 100 Ethereum, I'm just for easy sure. math. And you sell 80 of them at $12,000 and it goes up as high as 15, but then it crashes down to eight. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not really upset that you've sold off 80% at that 12,000 you're off doing. Yeah. And he's right. You're buying property with it. I mean, that's what I'm frigging doing. Sure. Buying properties and whatever I can get my mitts on that. I don't think. And, it, and it's about, it's not even about making anything on them so much as keeping up with the inflation and sure. you know not not losing value or if things you know tank everything is relative you know yeah. what i mean it's like you know it's like well everything's you know really cheap too so you know you gotta measure it's really what can you get for this unit of money that you're now working with that it comes down to you have to start to think in those terms Yep. You know, and I'd really love to see those Bitcoin maxis starting to think in those terms as well, because I think that you're going to see Cardano running because these are going to be the people who missed Ethereum and then to Polkadot and, you know, and it's just going to go on and on. And then it's going to become the guessing game about the what the next one is. And, you know, I, I got to be out of the mix by then, because, again, you know, it'll just get to that point um, now that we're checking the history that. I think I've got a pretty good rate of calling things and yeah. I think you're safe right now if you own ETH and just FYI, I've got my sell price and we'll see how it goes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just some he hopefully helpful words here, you know, um, time is really important, right? Time, uh, when we're talking about investments or capital investments, uh, or capital assets, I meant, um, so, for example, if you could sell 10 of them, right, at, at 12 grand, uh, and you buy a business for 120 grand, that generates you 30 grand a month or something, or 15 grand a month. Um, and you were relatively uh, reassured that that business could still bring you 20 grand a month or whatever for the next five years, right? Um, so, I think I would love to see people start wrapping their mind around capital assets when they think about coming out, uh, you know, just rotating to another asset that could generate you income um yeah 
Arcane Voodoo says, with Amazon set to release its new token soon, could this be the Google coin you've spoken about that's coming? Well, I mean, my question would be, does it fit the description? Because we can go back and pull the description out. Isn't it like three men? And yeah, I think I you said it would be them. three notable uh, personalities, two well-known, and I think you might have said one um, possibly not, right? Right. Um, yeah, in the public and, eye, anyway. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So I don't think this fits the description. Um, they, they are talking about uh, accepting Bitcoin. Uh, they basically said they're all ready to go, and they also explained that they would be coming out with their own crypto potentially uh before 2022 and they're going to start with bitcoin and then uh transition over to ethereum cardano bitcoin cash um so yeah any additional thoughts sam i guess that's a no then arcane okay. voodoo and obviously a very popular question with eight upvotes thanks so much again dear ingenious blabbing genie <laughs> IBG, ticker IBG okay. for Matt Zelenko. And sweet Ho Mo, Alabama. Wow, that's ho amazing. Moo. Ho Mo. Sweet Ho Mo. Oh my God, I can't read. Yes. So I've uh, started exploring the world of blockchain games. What a feast. It seems to me the play to earn economy will soon become a large part of the proper economy. The one conceived in more traditional terms, please blab deeper on how play to earn games will grow, how it will merge with the less playful proper economy and about the role of Star Atlas in transforming our world quietly and yet profoundly. Thank you properly and playful. <laughs> Any thoughts? Well, I mean, score an A plus for all yeah. those. Uh... P words there <laughs> and Matt Zelenko obviously other people have the same question because yeah seven votes so um do you have a link there for Star Atlas can sure. you get us the price yeah let's do it let's see what's going on <clears throat> so uh anybody that's been following along Star Atlas comes in two different flavors you have a polis uh, which is, this is, when we started the show, it was actually down quite a bit. It's now up 25%. A polis is the governing token for on the platform. And then the other one is the in-game currency called Atlas. And this was also down uh, when we started the show. And now it is up 20%. So those are the two. This is not super real time, but my trading view can't find them yet. So this is, we'll have to just go off this. Any thoughts? Yeah, I think that um, it's something that it may calm down in price as there's a little bit of a pullback in the market short term. So again, you know, it may be a good idea to put half in now and then the other half see about the pullback. You may want to split it 50-50. Um, you were saying that there's an opportunity to stake Atlas mm -hmm. with Polis. Is that the right uh order? Yeah, nope, you nailed it. Yep, you got it right on. Um, there is an opportunity. So I guess this game is going to roll out in two flavors. Uh, the first one is going to be a very basic version of this game, um, and I'm not sure when that release is, but it does allow you to stake your Atlas to earn Polis. Um, as the game progresses, you won't be able to use Atlas as an in-game currency if you are currently staking it. So there's probably a cooldown period there where the, I'm sure they'll let you remove the Atlas and use it as an in-game currency. But it, it, you know, if I had to guess, it'd be a few days or a week or 30 days, something like that. And that's typical. Uh, and that helps take care of some of the token economics and wild swings uh, within kind of in-game currencies and staking and DeFi and different things. So yeah. that's fairly normal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, so one way um, is you could stake your Atlas and earn Polis. Um, but I'm sure as the game ramps up and especially gets to that version 2 where it's 3D, it's running the Unreal Engine, it's very immersive, it looks like a you know top AAA video game that you would play on your PS5 or something. Um, you know, there's going to be battles and people's ships blowing up and you're going to need to buy fuel and you're going to need to hire a crew and uh, you're going to need to buy a new spaceship or upgrade your thing. So that's where you would use the Atlas uh, in-game currency. So just any thoughts around these, Sam? Well, I think that the, the Atlas currency probably has the 
bigger opportunity percentage wise to go up. Mm -hmm. But I think that um, the actual price of the star atlas, so that would be Polis. P -O mm -hmm. Is it P-O-L-I-S? Can you put it back is. to that? Yep. Yeah, there we go. There we yeah. go. Yeah, this is the yeah. governance token. The team is taking a quite a larger percentage of this Polis token, but that's for, fairly normal, so they can kind of keep a handle on the progression and uh, voting yeah. inside the game. So, you know, um, but they are taking very little of this Atlas in-game currency, and that's very unique to see. So I'm, I was glad to see that from the team. That's that's really good. So that means they want players to use this. They don't necessarily want the development teams using this and just the opposite with Polis. Right. So. Absolutely, and I, I have no problem with them having a yeah. lot of skin in the game because yep. then they're not going to abandon. So, I mean, some people, um, like myself, I don't do trading, but once in a while, you know, I will be taking profits from stuff that I've held for longer than a year, mm -hmm. and I have to move. I'm making another choice because you have opportunities like this. So because I would have to hold it for more than a year, I would be interested in looking into how i can stake polis mm -hmm. to earn atlas i do feel like atlas is gonna uh, be something that is gonna go up in price like i said maybe to a dollar but i mean if star atlas is the next axie well then sorry i'll be more prepared next time i'm just okay. on the fly here with the axie. That's okay. yeah so that's 72 dollars um and of course axie is still gonna go up more from where it's at, but you will find that some people will sell their Axie and then buy Polis mm -hmm. for like the nine bucks. That makes total sense because again, they all seem to, you know, not all the time though, because there's some um, similar DEXs to, well, or the same idea as Uniswap, for example, um, but they don't go for the same price that Uniswap goes for right so it's kind of the same idea you can't always assume that but i do feel like yield guild games and star atlas are in that situation and i feel now really lucky that i got in with ygg at the price that i did because ygg is over eight dollars and here star atlas is all the polis is already like nine dollars and eighty cents mm-hmm um, so it seems like, you know, things are just getting hotter and hotter and it's going to be more and more, it's going to be more difficult to get in on the ground floor on these things. Absolutely. And, uh, I'm sure we're going to see, you know, pressure on Solana, uh, because you kind of need Solana to get, um, in, in lots of different ways or on lots of different applications. You need to use Solana to get your, your start Atlas tokens. Um, I wanted to show the Radium decks, but Radium just does not want to pick up Atlas or Polis. Um, it, it's it's fine. Solana can see the uh, USDC and it can see other things, but it just can't see um, Atlas um, and Polis yet. And I don't know if that's a liquidity issue, right? Because remember, it's a DEX. It's got to pull from some liquidity. I'd be interested in uh, seeing if uh, the Serum DEX uh, can can get a hold of it. So as we're chatting here and blabbing for the next, uh, you know, 45 minutes or so, I'll see if I can get uh, Serum to uh, take a look at it. So back to um, questions. Uh, hey, Sam and Moo, got some money to invest in a play-to-earn token this week. Which is a good one right now? CGG, YGG, Sand, Alien Worlds, Zoo, or Emon? <clears throat> Let's take a look at the list, shall we? Yeah. And we'll, maybe we'll get a um, and we'll get a flash. Do, do, do. So let me just refresh here. Let's take a look in the last 24 hours. Uh, oh, Start Atlas is now starting to be recorded. Okay. Um, and let's even sort these by the last hour. So both both Star Atlas tokens are doing well. Uh, Iman here, I've mentioned this several times. Um, anyway, um, Sam, do any come to mind? Uh, um, either the ones they mentioned, you know, CGG, YGG, or let me just sort these again by market cap, and I'll just kind of scroll down. Uh, anything come to mind here? Atari had a wonderful day. 
uh, and a wonderful week. And if I sort these by the week, I'm sorry, I keep blabbing. Um, but, you know, these were mentioned up on the Psychic Nerds Discord as well. I don't know if anybody's got a chance to play these, but, you know, Move, I just kind of like the name. <laughs> and uh, Zoo, uh, Ethermon, um, but some of these done incredibly well uh, over the last week. Any thoughts here, Sam? Well, I'd like to stick with the bigger ones. Um, okay. Let me just, sort them by yeah. market cap. Yeah, so let's just take a look down here and see. So, um, so she's probably listed from what she can buy as well. Jeez, where's Chain Guardians at? Right here. Uh, I just passed it. All time high in Chain Guardians, I think, it was uh, two forty seven. It's now at one forty five. Right on. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not its all-time high because remember, way, way, way back yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anywho, I don't know. The one I'm currently stocking is Star. Me too. But, you know, if yep. you want to get some YGG, it mm -hmm. did pull back. What mm -hmm. is it now? You know, games. Uh, let's take a look. Eight dollars and seventy-two yeah. cents. Uh, it's already up quite a bit because I think it went as low as like eight dollars and eighteen cents. I was like, "Oh, bye, bye, bye." Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> ten dollars yep. was too much, right? So, like I yep. just said at the beginning, like anything under nine is still good. Mm -hmm. So I would maybe split the difference. I like splitting the difference because you know this market is crazy, and there's absolutely no reasoning to any of it. Like really, <laughs> there's... I love it when you say it that way. Well, uh, you know, you yeah. absolutely do have to be a psychic medium. I mean, so many people say that and I, who are in cryptos are like, you know, you have to be psychic too. I'm like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> 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 that's, that's exactly the way I do. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. That's the only reason what I would say to you is get it. up on the discords, uh, go play these games. If you enjoy the discords, you like hanging out with these people. If it's a fun game, it's going to tell you which ones are good um, is what I would tell you to do. Um, if you think, wow, I wouldn't even play this game if they paid me, that's probably not a good one. <laughs> right? It's true. Uh, Kitty007 says, hey, Sam and Moo, I bought half of my Super and Reef with ETH and Uniswap and other half with BSC Pancake Swap because fees are so cheap. Last week, I thought you said BNB will fade away, question mark. Are my Reef and Super safe to hold through BSC, question mark. Or should I bridge everything back to the ETH network? Worried if BNB goes away, so will my coins. Thanks for all you do. Well, I don't see it really going down that way at all, Kitty007, which is really great because we don't want anything bad to happen to anybody's cryptos at any right. time. I mean, I don't want you people losing it because you pressed the wrong button or... Right didn't rebuild your wallet with your seed words before dumping a few hundred thousand worth of crypto and, you know, and then having your computer go kaput. And then, then that's how you find out that you missed one of the seed words, right? You know, like yeah. those little things like that can just, I mean, and I hate moving my cryptos, right? Like I rebuilt my Exodus wallet cause it's, you know, store cold storage offline, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to use it this time to, get some star atlas and so i just find it easier to use on my laptop so i use it on my laptop that i don't go on the internet like for opening emails or mm -hmm. anything like that i have my um, vpn on you know all that stuff right but i'm still ner and I'm, i have to rebuild it because it's not usually even on the laptop Mm -hmm. You know, so, but that's how I want it. I just didn't want to press the wrong button. So I was like so nervous about that. I was like, I know how to do it on my laptop. So I've got it there and I'm still waiting for that USDT. That's what I have to use because it's to buy it on the FTX. You need mm -hmm. USDT. That is Tether. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yes. I'm even using Tether. That's how desperate I am. It must be a good coin token. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um. Thanks, Sam. Um, next question here is from JM. Hey, y'all. Thanks for what you do. Truly thankful and blessed. Any timeline for a Digibyte? You mentioned a few months back it might run like Theta, but also you have a target price of $9. Will it ever hit 15 or even 9 in the next three to six months? 
Anyways, um, Jaya, I, I digress. You were asking about Digibyte, and I do think it will run like Theta. Um, we are past the six month point because Theta started running at February. So, you know, I know that you're probably a little bit disappointed in that. But do I think it'll hit nine dollars in the next three to six months? Um, no, not in the next three to six months. You might get it to um, ninety cents, mm -hmm. something like that, in the next three to six months. But certainly within the next couple of years, I can still see it up at something like nine dollars, maybe even more. You know, and that's why it's important, JM, to make sure that you've spread your bets. Because hey, what if I'm wrong? What if it's going to just in six days from now? It starts to run or maybe i was just a little bit off on the six months now i do own digibyte and um but i don't have a large percentage of my portfolio in digibyte it's probably you know point something percent of my portfolio so that way there i'm not like eyeing it suspiciously you know as it you know continues to do all of these crazy moves ups and up and down like i said earlier there's no um there's no explanation for this market sometimes. And right now, everybody's all fascinated with yeah. the gaming NFTs. Thanks, Sam. Uh, Digital Assets Jared says, thank you, Sam and Moo, for all you do. Do you see Reef gaining exposure due to the parachain auctions for when people start to look into the Polkadot ecosystem this year? Any blab would be awesome. Um, I think Reef is going to gain its traction on its own so that... You don't have to even wait for polka dot so be careful about waiting too long for reef i think it'll be back up okay. in the four cents thanks sam and uh you know we had quite a bit of discussion going on this week with parachain auctions how they work you know the kusama round two is beginning to start round one burned 10 percent of the kusama didn't burn sorry it 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 locked up 10 percent of the uh, kusama supply which put a lot of pressure on the price of kusama and now we're beginning round two so we kind of anticipate the same thing is going to happen again um if anybody wants to kind of see how these are going um let me just hit refresh it's going to be mad at me for two or three or five seconds here <clears throat> but you can see the ongoing uh auctions here the parachain auctions and then it, it also show the uh completed auctions as well so um anyway i just find this very very interesting uh if anybody wants to learn more about this uh a lot of information was posted up on the uh, discords um this week so if you want to kind of get more familiar about how that works and you might want to do that because um um, you know, Kraken's going to allow you to participate within the parachain auctions, or you can do it directly, um, you know, with, with your dot once it's available, once we get there. But the Kusama ones are still going on right now. So you might want to get a little f familiar with the process and what that means. Um, typically, there's a lockup of like 48 weeks after you commit your Kusama, and I expect uh, dot's probably going to work the same. I don't know how many weeks it'll be, but like in Kusama, you basically, you basically crowd loan your Kusama tokens to the project. The project takes those, locks them up for a certain amount of weeks. They use them to, as an auction process to make sure they get a parachain um, after the auction's completed and the time limit uh, goes past, you get your Kusama back and you get a bunch of tokens, right? So that's kind of how that works for whatever project that you kind of crowd loaned to. And I sh I'm sure the dot's gonna work exactly the same. Um, that's all I yeah. have for that one. That, that would be one that I would definitely, um, look at with my polka dot. I would look at holding that. I'd be willing to hold that for, you know, sure, for sure. like the time, because I really do feel like that's a good midterm project, meaning, you know, sure. like three, four years. So I wouldn't have any problem at all holding it. Whereas some stuff I'm just looking at just taking the majority of the profits and, you know, keeping the five percent but doing something else with it so that's nice when that's the other thing about sort of spreading your bets is that you can make these different decisions based on you know what's out there and um you know regardless of what polka dot is doing i have absolutely no intentions of selling it until i reach you know my sell prices hey sam and moo i'm trying to build more exposure to nfts in my portfolio already having or already have super and i'm thinking about buying into board mutant ape Yacht Club, do you see this collection as a blue chip NFT collection that lasts into the future? Do you have any comments 
about the top collections right now on OpenSea as to which ones might be considered blue chips in the future from Martin G. Uh, you know, actually, this, I think it's a Saturday. I have my um, live stream with the premium. So what? that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through OpenSea just because there's only 71 people in the premium. And so a lot of times we only get about 20 people in the live stream. And I always set aside at least one hour. And I think that this is going to take some time, Martin G. So thanks for uh, bringing that up. And then if the premium members don't mind, I'll just open it up to everybody so that you can review it. Right. Because the thing about it is it's, they have a private venue with me so they can ask as many questions as they want. Yep. I don't, I don't put a limit on it. I mean, if there's only 71 people, I would put a limit on it. If like every, I had five people coming in and asking 20 questions each, I'd be like, Oh yeah, that's too much. <laughs> you need to book a reading now. <laughs> but anyways, no, I, I don't know about board mutiny Ape, yacht club. I, I see a lot of stuff as just a money-making venture. It's um, you know, just artwork that if you like it, buy it, if you can afford it, I think that you need to look at this stuff. Um, and I think that you have to think along the lines as getting one of those um, uh, things that you can really mount it so that when people come in, they can see your, or they can click a link and they can see your NFT um, where you can share your art, or maybe you can have it set up so that when people come into your home, they can, you know, you can mount your NFT, you know, people know that. This is, there are contraptions yep. out there that you can set up and that people will come yep. in and they'll be like, oh, what's that? Oh, that's my NFT. But as far as more of a sure thing, um, I feel like I would be looking for the collectibles as in not board mutant, mutant, mutant ape yacht club, but collectibles from um, basketball and football ball and baseball and some of these other things that are going on that people are interested in that they're collecting the same as in the real world like paintings by um uh what is that uh, banksy you know mm -hmm. so once banksies are put on so somebody for example who owns a banksy you know maybe they have the right to put it on an nft and share it that way exactly yeah, IP rights are kind of important. Let me just give you a couple of blabs about NFTs. Martin G., I don't know your wealth, right? I don't know how wealthy you are. Uh, typically, these NFTs that the ones you're speaking of are, they're flex mechanisms. What does that mean? This is just a way for, you know, rich people have always bought art, right? Or they buy Ferraris or they buy really expensive uh, watches, right? Um, it's so the ones you're talking about are, are of that caliber. Um so if that's you, um, what you're getting with a lot of these is you're getting access to an exclusive club. What does that mean? It might be a Discord that only allows people that have such a NFT to be even, uh, you're only allowed in if you have one. Um, I know there's physical locations around the globe that uh, if you want to go there, you have to present one of these uh, NFTs and verify that, that that's you. Um, if you. If anybody out there is just blindly... <clears throat> you know, trying to pick an NFT, it's going to be pretty hard. So I want to show two pieces of software that I've showed before, I believe I showed one of them before that can help you a lot. And it, listen, if there's just a nice NFT non fungible token out there, um, that you just like the art of it, or you like the look of it and you can get it for what you think is a reasonable or a cheap price. Who am I to say what you should spend your money on? Um, the cheapest way to do those things is just to mint them. So each one of these projects will have a minting process. So what does that mean? What is minting? It means you're actually going to the contract and you're saying, here's some ETH. I would like a, one of these randomly put together uh, JPEGs. Um, the, your other option is to buy them uh, at, at, at a marketplace like OpenSea. And uh, you're going to have to pay, right? Because there's lots of people that, that minted very, very expensive NFTs. Uh, for very little money and these things are changing hands back and forth between rich people so I just I don't know what group you fall into but um, let me show you two tools uh, that maybe this will help uh, get a handle so the first one here is is rarity tools and you can use this 
um, to do all sorts of things and get uh, all sorts of information about different kinds. Uh, it'll give you the floor prices. It'll give you kind of the, the, the trends um, and the traits of these different NFTs. And then this is probably the best one. Uh, I mean, I know a lot of wealthy individuals that use this. Um, and this is a WGM i.io and with this you can very quickly see the the change percentage um in the in the prices of these things so um it'll build you a new floor and then a current floor so um hope that helps um what you're really buying is a flex mechanism and what you're buying is is exclusivity to a specific club or a group of people like you um a lot of people have said well these things are so illiquid uh, that you might run into an issue or, you know, if ETH goes from four grand to 40 grand, suddenly um, you might not be able to get your ETH back out, for example. I'm just giving you an example. But uh, in my experience, extremely wealthy people almost have unlimited amounts of money. So who am I to say? Um, hope that helps. Uh, Tom19 says, hey, Sam and Moo, thanks for your advice. I have a full node of ETH. Coinbase has offered to stake the node at 25% commission. So they're going to take 25% commission. Uh, are they better and more reasonable ways to stake yeah. at present? Yeah. Take 25%. Yeah. So obviously the best way is to just self stake, Tom, but I don't know how um, technical you are. Um, the next best, I think, for people is maybe not to stake at all. Maybe just uh, put it up in an interest-bearing account. So a lot of people um, use the terms interest-bearing platforms yeah. and staking as being the same. They are not. No. Um, I have a few up on Kraken. I think Kraken works great. I don't know what they take, but it's nowhere near 25%. Um, yeah. Any thoughts? I was just going to say that I am in complete agreement. If you like to have your money earning something for you if you're not staking or baking it. And Ethereum, until it goes to um, proof of stake, you know, it's not going to be easy. Then you're going to have all these platforms that you can, just like, like you can stake your te Tezos or your, sorry, your ADA. You know, there's all these different um, places that you can stake it and make a return on it. I feel like once Ethereum goes to proof of stake, that's going to happen. But until that happens, your best bet is to just go to a North American exchange like Kraken and earn an interest rate. Um, you know, I the only I, the main two offshore ones that I use that are out, exchanges that I use that are outside of North America are KuCoin and Hubai Global. I use those two. I find them easy to use, you know, get in, get out. And they um, have, well, especially KuCoin, they have so many tokens to choose from that you can't get elsewhere. So I was um, kind of happy, actually, when they approached me and gave me an opportunity to do an affiliate link with them. Somebody just wrote me and they um, told me that they watch our channel. So I was excited to hear that. So, yeah. so it was, I thought... I said to um, my brother, I said, well, I said, you know, at least it's a, it's an exchange that I use because I get approached by exchanges all the time and coins and I get a few a week now, but you know, I don't do that. That's just not what I do. Um, but if somebody's already going to be using something anyways, and if people are asking me, is it okay if I go and use KuCoin? I'm like, well, I use it. Like, so I think it's okay. Just, you know, again, yeah. like, don't, don't look. My my big money is like sitting on Gemini, for example. It's not in an offshore one, but you know, as far as doing trading and having access to coins, I mean, I know that you can't just do the North American exchanges, or you'd be missing out. And sometimes um, you can't always get stuff easily on like Uniswap or through MetaMask. Yeah, Tom, I'd love to have a larger discussion about this, but we'd have to talk at length uh, around the benefits and disadvantages of doing such a thing. Um, Alana says, Hey, Sam and Moo, I have some UMA that I've held for nearly a year. It is a small percent of my portfolio, but I'm looking to reduce the number of coins I hold. Should I keep it or sell it for more AMP, which is down this week? Do you think UMA will do well? Thanks. Yeah, I still think that there's some more room um, for UMA. 
and uh, yes, I can see why you might want to reduce the number of coins that you hold, but you're going to be able to do that soon anyways, Alana, because the market's going to rise, so you're going to be able to start peeling stuff off soon. Yay. Alana, all I see, you know, UMA is kind of like a cross between synthetics and chain link. Uh, but to be honest with you, I just see Chainlink eating more and more of the market, and I just see synthetics eating more and more of the market. So I'd be curious if you had things like Solana. Do you have things like Cosmos? Do you have some of these uh, train tracks that would just be great for you to have? I don't know if you do, but um, yeah, you know, yeah, that's a, another good idea. Is moving it into something like, you know, that, you know, again, you know, I feel like the next step from Ethereum is Cardano. So that's mm -hmm. why I would have been remiss to put all of my gunpowder in Ethereum and not share some of that gunpowder with Cardano just because we know the risk is higher. But after you've just watched Cardano take a pretty big dive, you're like, OK, well, the downside can't be that much more down. And since I'm not selling it for a year now, I'm locking in for a year because I get taxes on the brain. Right. We all have to think about this stuff by going like for like. So I think that that's fantastic advice, Muant. I concur. We're yeah, on the pa same page today a lot, which is yeah, man. exciting because I feel more confident when, you know, you're getting something as well because we've both had such great hits together as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about, you know, what's coming this week. And, you know, and there is going to be those vicious pullbacks. We don't know exactly when, but just, you know what, just relax here. Uh <laughs> Chandra. Hello, Sam and Moo. Uh, as the blue chips NFTs prices are skyrocketing, where's the best place to invest in fractionalized blue chip NFTs? Thank you for everything you do. You know, you could probably do that. You could probably put together a group. If you're a tech person, you could build a smart contract that would do that for you. Um, I know there's some platforms like that, uh, but I haven't used them and I don't really want to talk about them, Chandra. I just don't want to point anybody in the, the wrong direction. Also, listen, I, I'm kind of curious because, and I'm not saying this about you, Chandra, but, you know, NFTs have been around for a minute um, and we've seen exceptional growth in price. But why is it now that that kind of the larger crypto public is now interested in them? I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure, Chandra. Uh, any thoughts there, Sam? Well... I would have to say that it's a really interesting area. And if Chandra, if you are fascinated by that and you want to get involved and get to know it better, I know I do and I want to support it the same as I support blockchain. And mm -hmm. the way I'm going to do it is by, you know, listing my NFTs. I, it, you know, it'll probably be on OpenSea because I think most people here have an OpenSea account. Mm -hmm. And it'll be for um, the Sam Jammer Patreons, the ones that I practice on the Discord. And any ones that aren't bought up, we'll send over to the Psychic Nerds in general. See if anybody in there wants any, you know, after a certain amount of time. You know, membership has its privileges. And I want to find a way to give back. But each one will represent a one-hour reading time that you can turn in at any time. And it it is what I can, I consider it a loyalty token and it's in the form of an NFT instead of doing a coin. Originally I was gonna do a coin, but then the NFTs came out and I was like, oh, that'll be it because at least people can enjoy artwork that represents myself, my knowings and some of the legends who work on the channel. And we can have some fun with it. and. Some people may hold on to this for years. For sure. Because, yeah. you know, there's a lot, there's going to be a lot of time, especially after the 18 months when I'm not going to be available for readings. I'm going to be busy like the rest of you spending my money. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, thanks. Uh, Florence Florence says, uh, hey, Dream Team. In a previous video, Sam mentioned that she stores her private keys in her safe. I have a hard time understanding the difference between seed words and the actual private keys. Um, do you suggest to download the private keys and store your seed words? If so, can you download your private keys in a safe way? So Florence, let's talk about that. All those seed words are, is there a hash? They're an easy, readable, human way um, and f to see things that humans understand. Words like cold, 
hot dog, dog, things like this, right? So it, it's an easy human readable thing that is exactly, it just, all those things do is they, they're basically, their interpretations of a hash and a hash is just your private key. So in all actuality, they're the same thing. You can use multiple pieces of software to take a private key um, and recover that wallet, just like you can take the seed words and recover that wallet. So they are essentially the same things, just one's more easily human readable. So I hope that helps. Um, and then do you suggest to download the private keys? Yeah. Um, and store your seed words. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, put them somewhere very safe, a fireproof box, um, you know, inside of a safe, uh, you know, be very careful emailing these types of things to yourself. Uh, if someone grabs your email, they might have access. Be very careful taking a picture of these things and, you know, accidentally, uh, you know, having them up on, uh, you know, the iCloud or, you know, uh, you know, some storage. That, so just be very careful. I would write these down. I would double and triple check them. I love Sam's idea that you never should put things into a wallet unless you know how to rebuild that wallet. So go ahead and just rebuild it from scratch after you get the words, as long as that all goes okay. Move a little piece there. So yeah, just protect these things and take them out of the digital realm, like actually write them down. Now, as far as extracting a public key, yes, you can extract a public key on your computer for all the good wallets. Um, but if there's a piece of nefarious software running on your computer or something um, that screen scrapes every now and then, and most people that have this kind of stuff running on the computers don't realize they have it running on the computers, it's not picked up by things, um, then, then they got your stuff. So hope that helps. Sam, any additional ideas there? Yeah, thanks for pointing that out about um, it's, you know, key loggers, they can download. And that's why I mentioned about storing your stuff offline. And like me, where I have a laptop, that I just use to manage my wallets. I don't use it to surf the internet. I don't click right. links from emails. That's how they get into your system. They do. So if you go out and you buy a fresh laptop, even you don't have to spend a lot of money. Right? And get a great you, one for two, three, four, five hundred dollars these days. Yeah. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Just get one of those and just and you got the VPN on it. Um, I don't keep my, for example, Exodus wallet on it. I do have my private key, but you know what? It was copy and pasted off of the Exodus when I had the VPN running. I have my virus software on it. I'm on my own Wi-Fi, which has like this passcode like this long that they, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's exactly. like, I'm not, I'm not at Starbucks doing it. Right. I don't think Starbucks are open very much anymore are they so <laughs> you can't do that but anyways you know what i'm saying because yeah. you copy and paste it and what i do is i have it on a usb mm -hmm. so what i do is i always have at least two locations and one of them is in a fireproof safe that's what i do we have never talked about this before yeah that's what i do that's kind of cool um yeah sorry i was just <laughs> i thought that yeah. was that's well, that's exciting. the way that you do it. And I mean, I'm very, I'm, I'm very simple. I see that the majority of money that we're going to lose are for different reasons, like having too many tokens you can't keep track of, so you don't convert them. And then when you find out you don't have the opportunity and you throw that three or $4,000 away that they were worth, if you had been on the move doing it. Um, so you lose that money or you lose money because you, used instead of the proper ethereum wallet you do use the ethereum address for the erc20 token that you're sending you know people make that mistake all the time too yeah so all of these little things that you can do that will shut you out of your money but you know make sure that you have your private keys copied and do it in a way that you're not just randomly doing it on your desktop that you're surfing the internet on because um i think sometimes I don't mention that enough about how you can infect your computer. And if you want to make sure you don't get your money stolen, make sure that you have it in a few different places, but you don't ever, ever um, copy your private keys on a desktop that could potentially have that malware in it because then they got your stuff. Cause all they have to do is take that private key and then they can restore that wallet. They don't need seed words. Seed words are for stuff, people like us, right? Like I use seed, I didn't use my private key to restore my Exodus to flip some of my ETH that I keep on there into 
the USDT to send to buy some Star Atlas, right? I, mm -hmm. you know, I use my seed words. Right. Yeah, and just, yeah, I, I think that's great. Monica says here, hey, Sam and Moo, uh, I have 7K to invest in IRA crypto account. What two coins, what two or three coins and percentage do you see having the highest multiples for me in this account in the next two years? Much love and gratitude for all you do, Monica. What two to three coins yeah. and percentage do you yeah. see having highest multiples for me in this account? Mm -hmm. Well, that would be more like an ask a medium question, Monica. So maybe we should save that, especially where we only have less than 15 minutes left. And Freestar has a question. Sure. Hey, guys. After my grandpa, Earn ro rocked up last week and hung around Sam, uh, ERN token uh, has just listed on Australian Exchange CoinSpot. You can stake it to farm stones, which is another sink that cropped up this week. Could you please look into it and see what you think? It seems to have some decent NFT partnerships. Forgive me if this has been done already. Thank you. No, no, it hasn't been done already. And isn't that funny? Earn, who is the, it stands for Ethernity Chain. Mm -hmm. I think I said that right. Ethernity Chain. Yep. Yep, we talked about this last couple of weeks for sure. Oh, have we? Okay. We um, duh, right? <laughs> and geez, the last couple of weeks would have been the time to buy it too, because it did bump up a little bit. Yeah, we were and, talking about um, NFT platforms. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, that one's good. And I like the uh fact that it's down seventy seven percent um from its all time high five months ago. So that means there's a lot of meat on the bone there if you buy it at this price. So, but again, I mean, I'm not going to buy it. I don't want to expand my coins and tokens any more than I already am today. But now I have to decide which one of my children to sacrifice. If I'm going to get Star <laughs> Atlas, that's the rule. Yeah. Yes, um, I know. I know. I'm going to check out. Well, I have, I still have half of my Sia coin. And again, that is, you know, Sia coin was held for over, like for a few years. And it's at two cents. Um, so I'm like, it's all time high was, it was pretty high. And I was thinking about holding it to five cents for my Sia coin, but I might have to sacrifice that because I'm still, you know, I'm still up on it. So, um, but, you know, again, trying to reduce, but if you want to get earned or if you're holding it, good choice, Freestar. And just to let anybody know, if, if they haven't used the FTX exchange, uh, right, and you just want to use that exchange, uh, FTX US, you can use uh, USD up there. You can use Solana and you can use USDC um, to get the Star Atlas if it's something you guys want to do. Um, and it literally just took me a few minutes to get signed up. It was very quick and I was already, I was able to bump it up to level two, like even, like it only took me like 10 minutes maybe. So um, just a thought if, if people aren't registered there and now I get what Santino was saying, it looks like a, it looks like more like a legacy type, you know, platform. So a lot of the platforms you're familiar with through maybe some of your brokerage accounts and things like that, that's what it looks like. So it's very, I don't know. It's, it's good. I think it's going to be fine. Um, Sam and Moo, end of year price for tower token. I'm just going to skip around Sam because we literally just have a few minutes here. Um, let's see which one that's silver spirit. Um, that is no, that is rise and shine. Oh, okay. About two or three. Down from okay. There. So, oh no, I, I wouldn't know for the end of the year. Um, I think that you have probably the next year to dollar cost average into tower. We got, we were talking about it pretty cheap. Bye for now.